Hello, and welcome to When They Popped. I'm Kelsey. And I'm Mary. Mary, we've got mm. a pop-in episode. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. It is popping indeed. It's popping. So the Grammys are coming up, if you didn't know, and we're nothing if not consistent. So today we're going to be kind and rewind back 20 years to the 2004 Grammys. So this ceremony honored the best in music from the year before. So in this case, any music that came out between October 2002 through September 2003. So yeah, while it's the 2004 Grammys, we're basically looking at the best music of 2003. Confusing, Mm. but also lit. So the lineup of nominees at this show is truly a fever dream. And I want to set the scene of what the music landscape looked like in the year 2003. This was the year Janet Jackson got blacklisted because of the quote unquote wardrobe malfunction at the Super Bowl. Yet somehow Justin Timberlake was allowed to come and also perform totally unscathed. Did Janet rip her own bra off? Based on the Grammy people, you'd think so. This is the year that Numb by Linkin Park. So Yesterday by Hilary Duff. And Such Great Heights by the Postal Service. We're ruining our eardrums because we blasted them too loudly in the car. 2003 was also the year of my girl, Beyonce. She won the most awards at the 2004 Grammys. Five, in fact, And it was also a big night for Outkast, who won three awards. Beyonce, it's worth noting, also tied for the most nominations that night. Six, along with Outkast and her future husband, Jay-Z. How sweet. So we want to talk about some of the big winners of the night. But instead of just like, you know, reading off a list, we are going to play a fun game. Yes. And it's called Were They Robbed? That's my best Andy Cohen on Watch What Happens Live impression. (laughs) Do you like it, Mare? It's very good. Very good. Oh my God. Thanks. I watch it every night. So Mary and I are going to go through our favorite categories from the ceremony and make our case for if we think the right person won or if another artist was robbed. And honestly, with all of this talk about the Oscar snubs, like how insane it is that Barbie was nominated as best picture and Ryan Gosling was nominated for Ken, yet Greta Gerwig and Margot Robbie were not nominated. Maybe we should call this game, Were They Robbied? (laughs) And honestly, this podcast is fighting the patriarchy because we are honoring the young girls inside us who still just want to sit on the floor of their bedroom listening to their favorite CD. There is no judgment here, except right now, because we're literally about to judge the 2004 (laughs) Grammy winners. Before I hit you with the Grammy winners, I'm going to hit you with a copyright (laughs) disclaimer to say that we do not own or claim to own the rights to the songs or performances in this episode. The purpose of these clips is for commentary and critique. So let's get started with one of the big ones, Record of the Year. The nominees were Clocks by Coldplay. Crazy in Love, Beyonce featuring Jay Z. Where is the love? The Black Eyed Peas and Justin Timberlake. Lose Yourself, Eminem. And Hey Ya, Outcast. Do you like my pretending to be one of the announcer people? 10 out of 10 so far from you. I really feel like this could be a side hustle for me, you know? <laughs> yes. Well, <laughs> the Grammy went to, drum roll, Clocks Coldplay. So Mary, mm. I ask you, were they Margot robbie Yes. <laughs> There was a robbing, in my opinion. And I remember feeling really annoyed because I was definitely not in any sort of Coldplay era 
in 2003, 2004. Like later in life, sure. But I remember thinking like, oh, ma music one again. Like <laughs> always Coldplay. It's always you too. Like, you know, it's they're not going to give it to Beyonce or Eminem. I don't know. I just, I would have wanted Beyonce to get it, especially with Crazy and Love. And I also would have totally understood why Eminem would have won because Lose Yourself probably had the best stats out of all those songs that year. A young Mary was probably very salty over this. What do you think? Oh my God. I was so upset for Beyonce. She was robbed. But, you know, not me entering my Coldplay era later in high school. Like I see why they won now in hindsight, you know. Okay. Okay. So, but I still that... think Beyonce was robbed. Okay. Just saying my anger has tempered over okay. the years. I've hardened. <laughs> but also, have you seen Coldplay live? No, but I'm like not a huge Coldplay girly, like a little okay. bit. So I think that's what it, I think you need to see them live because it's really like the closest thing I've ever had to like a spiritual experience. More than Beyonce? It's just a whole different thing. Like that's crying, screaming, throwing up. Coldplay is like you put your hands in the air and you like disassociate for three hours. <laughs> well, I like and the sense like, of that. Hey. Oh, fair I don't enough. Know, there's just something about Coldplay live. You know, when you're into it, you're into it. I think because I got into them later that I look back on this now and I'm not as outraged. But I was outraged in 2004. <laughs> Let's move on to the next one. And that is album of the year. The nominees were Speaker Box. That's three X's <laughs> in Speaker Box. <laughs> dash The Love Below by Outcast. Under Construction, Missy Elliott, Fallen, Evanescence, Justified, Justin Timberlake, and Elephant by the White Stripes. And the Grammy went to Outcast. Hmm. Fun fact, this became the first and only rap album to date to win Album of the Year. And it was also the second hip-hop album to win Album of the Year, which the first one went to Lauren Hill's R&B album, The Miseducation of Lauren Hill in 1998. Also, I'm like, what is even the difference between record of the year and album of the year? Like, it doesn't make sense to me. Okay. I did some Googling and I don't know why it is the way that it is because it does make zero sense, but record of the year is for a single. Album of the year is for the entire album, which that makes sense. (laughs) But record of the year deals with a specific recording of a song and recognizes the artists, producers, and engineers who contributed to the recording. So we need to also then mention then another category, song of the year. Right. What? Record, album, and song. And song of the year deals with the composition of the song and is based on the songwriters. So the songwriters get the award for song of the year, not the artist, if the artist isn't a writer on the song. That makes sense. (laughs) But if you're a Max Martin, you're getting record of the year and song of the year. Yes. Yes, you are. That is correct, Kelsey. That is just putting into layman's terms, aka Max Martin terms. (laughs) So what do you think, Mary? Was anybody robbed? I will say stripped was robbed because as we'll learn soon, Stripped is nominated for other categories in this episode and it did not even get a nomination. But I mean, the speaker box, the love below, that is an incredible album. It was definitely my first introduction to Outkast. And after having three number two albums on the Billboard charts, Outkast finally got their first chart topping album with this one. Not only did the album boast Hey Ya, but we also got The Way You Move. Ooh, those horns, honey. And Roses as two other singles from the album. Caroline. I love it. I swear, I still hear either Hey Ya or The Way You Move at every single wedding I attend. They clearly defy time, space, gravity, musical trends, what have you. And in all, Speaker Box slash The Love Below amassed a total of seven weeks at number one, 24 in the top 10, and 56 weeks total on the charts. The album was certified Diamond Baby. Diamond Baby? Isn't that Paris Hilton's dog? (laughs) <laughs> yeah it's diamond baby or it's uh, like diamond baby bitch or, or no that's yes, harajuku, harajuku bitch, bitch. Yes. i think diamond baby got lost 
Diamond Baby got eaten by a coyote, they think. Yeah, because her stupid husband. I, God, I don't like her husband. Well, okay. This, we're talking about Paris and love. And if any of you guys have seen it, why does she keep putting her dogs in the doghouse when she knows coyotes keep going in and eating all her dogs <sighs> in the doghouse? Oh my God. I like, I saw that episode. I saw like the first two or three episodes of the new season and was just like, this is really hard to watch. <laughs> I, I can't watch it. I don't know, but I'm that's me being judgy. But what about you, Kels? Like, how do you feel about this album of the year? I'm with you. This also is my introduction to Outcast, and I think it was well deserved. The only one that I probably would have argued, like, of the nominees would be Missy Elliott. And mm. I want to talk about her album in a little bit. So, okay. more to come. All right, we're going to move on to another big one song of the year. So, as we know from Mary, this honors the composition of the song and the songwriters. Yes. So, the nominees for this one were Dance with My Father by Richard Marx and Luther Vandross. I'd love, love to dance with my father again. The songwriter of this was Luther Vandross. Beautiful, Linda Perry wrote for Christina Aguilera. I am beautiful, no matter what they say. Words can bring me down. I'm with you, Avril Lavigne and the Matrix. It's a Keep me in your heart, Jorge Calderon and Warren Zevon. Keep me in your heart for a while. <sighs> Lose yourself, J Bass, M Mathers, aka Marshall Mathers, aka <sighs> Eminem. The Grammy went to Dance with My Father, Richard Marx, and Luther Vandross. So were they robbed? Well, in my opinion, this is a beautiful song. But of these nominees, speaking from a strictly cultural zeitgeist perspective, you know, if I try to think objectively outside of my own personal mm. preferences, I think Lose Yourself was the song of the year. I agree. And I would have preferred a different song win myself, like my preference, but I agree. There is a really sweet story behind this Grammy ceremony, though. It's an unfun fact. It's mm. not a fun fact. It's a sad fact. So Luther won four awards that night, but he was unable to attend because he had a stroke several months earlier. And Celine Dion sang his song, Dance With My Father, with Richard Marx playing the piano in a tribute to Luther because mm. he couldn't be there that night, which is really sweet. How I love, love, love to dance with During the show, you know, they had a videotaped clip of him and he said, whenever I say goodbye, it's never for long because I believe in the power of love. And he died the following year in 2005. Mm. So, you know, what a high note of his career, you know, when he's yeah. sick and down. So womp womp, Debbie Downer noise here. But I thought it was heartwarming. That is a nice, I did not know about that. It is a really beautiful song. But speaking of beautiful I <laughs> how's that for a segue? I would have really liked to see that win. I think Christina, she came really kicking through some glass doors and ceilings with this album. And I really wish she could have gotten more recognition from, you know, the press, the award academies or the Grammy committee, you know, whatever. Yeah, whatever. But worth noting, I don't think we have addressed Avril on the pod yet. She's coming. But while I'm with you was probably one of my least favorite songs off her album, Let Go. I had no idea it was The Matrix who was behind this. And quick background, The Matrix is an American British songwriting and record production team consisting of Lauren Christie, Scott Spock, and Graham Edwards. And I always see Lauren Christie's TikTok videos now. She'll do like little behind the scenes, like songs you didn't know that I wrote or like songs you didn't know that I was behind. And it's like all these like cool songs. And besides with you, they're credited on Skater Boy. He was a skater boy. She said, see you later, boy. He wasn't good enough for her. Complicated. Tell me Why can't I? Why can't I breathe when I think about you? Don't bother. So don't bother. I won't die. Of this Just to name a few. 
but they really blew up and gained traction and notoriety as a production team because of their work with Avril on Let Go. I'm With You was Avril's third top 10 song off of her first album. It peaked at number four on the Billboard charts, and it spent 10 consecutive weeks in the top 10. I am with you. I'm with you. That, <laughs> I'm with you is not my no, favorite song. Absolutely not. I feel like, couldn't we have gone in with something a little bit stronger? I mean, she started with Complicated and then Skater Boy. Like, I, I mean, she came, she it, came out swinging. <laughs> she really did. I mean, the way I wanted to be a skater girl so bad. I but know. I tried to do the whole tie over a white tank. Because <laughs> I just looked like a band kid, you know? No hate to band kids. We would love just, pics of that era, Kels. Mary, it's so, oh my God, I wore the darkest eyeliner, like on the bottom only. Oh, yeah. My mom would always go, you look like you got a black eye because it would just (laughs) smudge everywhere. (laughs) Okay, should we go into the next one? Because this one is contentious to me. And that is Best New Artist. So the nominees were Evanescence, 50 Cent, Fountains of Wayne, Heather Headley, and Sean Paul. Hmm. And the Grammy went to Evanescence. Bring me back to life. <laughs> so were they robbed? Uh, yeah, I would say so. I would say there's some theory yes. here. For Sean Paul in particular, I believe he was robbed. You're trying to tell me that Get Busy didn't change lives? Oh man, get busy. Just say that booty nonstop when the beat drop. Just keep swinging and get jiggy. Okay, I completely agree. Do you remember when Get Busy would come on at a school dance? Like, <gasps> holy shit. All the teachers would have to go in and like separate yeah. everyone. Oh my God. Oh my God. But okay, Stacy's mom. Stacy's mom has got it going on. She's all I want and I've waited for so long. It was the band's highest charting hit in the United States. And I'm honestly kind of surprised because I thought this was like a hit hit song like i thought it would be much higher than 21 but i mean i guess it was on the chart for 17 weeks total but still like this song was a much bigger deal to me i guess than the rest of the public but and continuing to advocate for other winners for this award sean paul and 50 cent had huge years for sean paul duddy rock came out in 2003 it was two times platinum it had Freaking get busy and give me the light. Just give me the light and pass the job. He was also, he had just like such a big year. Sean Paul was featured on Beyonce's Baby Boy. Girl, me and you together is a rock that girl. I found it on in a you drop top girl. You know, stop shop girl. You come on the dirty one, rock that girl. And Blue Control's Breeze. So what's that supposed to be about? That's what I'm saying. Like, he deserved best new artist. I'm doubling down on Sean Paul. I think he was robbed. I love you, Fountains of Wayne. But, like, back to Sean Paul, because I have a a diatribe to read out on this, because I love his story. There's this really great Vice, like, mini documentary about him on YouTube. It's called, if you want to watch it, The Story of Get Busy by Sean Paul. And he shares his story of breaking through as this reggae dance hall artist from Jamaica that, like, no one really knew what to do with. That category didn't really exist here in the U.S. And his story is really inspiring. It touches on his roots as an artist. He originally wanted to sing about the hardships of growing up in Jamaica. uh, But his first ever producer was like, listen, I get what you're trying to do here. But like, this isn't your message. Like, you kind of grew up middle class. Like, you need to sing about what you know, which is being this like dance party boy. So once he got in touch with just doing like fun, upbeat dance songs, he just blew up he popped Mm -hmm. so you mentioned give me the light and that was his first huge hit that led him to get signed by atlantic records and when he was writing get busy which would be his second single after his breakthrough we learn in this documentary that his brother actually helped him come up with the lyrics for the hook when he's like y'all sexy ladies want power with us and i'm too white to do this justice so please put a clip Uh. Well, like, how cute is that? That is a little family effort. Aw, I wonder if he gets a cut. A writing credit? I hope he did. Yeah. So, Light Glue was his third single. Still, I got the six of my girls like glue, and I'm not playing number two. 
well, that was supposed to be the second single after Give Me the Light. But they made a super last minute decision to put out Get Busy first. Mm. And like, what awesome instincts because Get Busy was the thing that like totally I'm, catapulted him. Yeah, like, like Lou was good, but it just wasn't, it didn't have that like thing that Get Busy did. You're so right. And it topped the Billboard Hot 100 for three weeks in May. It was a top 10 hit in 11 other countries. Like, this was a global hit for him. And I'm just really proud of Sean Paul, and I really like him. He seems like a really nice person. (laughs) Oh, good. I'm so glad. You don't always hear the positive stories. But I'm not done on my advocating tirade here. I also want to mention 50 Cent. He had his album Get Rich or Die Trying come out in 2003 this was certified nine times platinum. Okay. Like this is stupid. Like so many times platinum. It had in the club. Wangsta. Twenty one questions. Girl, it's easy to love me now. But you love me if I was down. And out, but you still have love for me. If I can't, if I can't do what homie can't be done, now I'ma let the champagne bottle pop. I'ma take it to the top. Show I'ma make it hot, baby. And PIMP, I don't know what you heard about me. Put a bitch can't get a dollar out of me. No Cadillac, no perms you can't see. Then I'm a motherfucking PIMP. Era defining singles. And Girl, I, uh, say, yeah, let me like he released a love song on his rap album. Okay. Like 21 questions. That is like kind of a love song. So I'm going <laughs> to say it right out and say 50 was Margot Robbie here. And to be fair, I did some digging on Evanescence and obviously bring me to life was such like, we were all listening to that too. Like, let's be real. <laughs> Their 2003 album Fallen was certified diamond and it also boasted going under. And My Immortal. I just think it's a taste and preference thing, honestly. So I'm going to say 50 and Sean Paul, I would have preferred to see get it. But I get why Evanescence did as well. You're being very lawyerly. Political. Is that what the term is? <laughs> Probably. She's straddling a line. Towing well, a line. Yeah, we're happy for the emos of the world, okay? I'm glad you got what you wanted. So let's move on to the pop genre because I've had enough yes. <laughs> Evanescence talk yeah. for tonight. Our next category is very exciting. Best female pop vocal performance. Oh, this is just a busting with talent category. So our nominees are beautiful Christina Aguilera. I'm with you, Avril Lavigne. Miss Independent. Kelly Clarkson. White Flag by Dido. Fallen, Sarah McLaughlin, a.k.a. the ASPCA's secret weapon for those sad dog shelter mm. commercials. Beautiful by Christina Aguilera. And my hot take is not robbed. They got this one right. I agree. Miss Independent was a bop, but it's hard to hold a candle to beautiful. Like the song takes on self-esteem, insecurity. It promotes a message of self-empowerment, embracing your inner beauty. Like you cannot tell me the themes of stripped this song, the messages in this music video were not ahead of its time. And beautiful 
criminally peaked at number two on the Billboard chart. If you can believe that, I feel like that was on the radio, like on repeat, but it stayed on the chart for 27 weeks. It's Christina's longest charting single certified double platinum, but just as an aside, I did have some moments as a young lass listening to Sarah McLaughlin's fallen, staring out the window, rain falling down emo moments. And that's what she's like, I messed up. Better, <laughs> I should know. I mean, very similarly, I got to say, I think White Flag by Dido really slaps. <laughs> Lender Magazine ranked it as like number 317 on their list of the 500 greatest songs since you were born. I feel the same way about the Sarah McLachlan thing. Like it's yearning and wistful. It just makes me feel like I'm in a rom-com and like yes. the drama part. Like if this came on the radio, I wasn't going to change the channel. I'll say that much. All right, so let's move on to our next category in the pop genre, and that is Best Male Pop Vocal Performance. Our nominees are Cry Me a River by Justin Timberlake. Any Road by George Harrison. Ain't No Mountain High Enough by Michael McDonald. Send Your Love by Sting. Send your love into the future. Keep Me in Your Heart by Warren Zevin. Hmm. And our winner is Cry Me a River by Justin Timberlake. Dot, 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 dot. Okay, this sucks because you obviously guys know how I feel about things, but I like this song. Like, I hate that I like this song knowing kind of how it was created and that it was made with our girl kind of as a scapegoat. I hate it. But like, if that was not the case, like I would champion for this song. Like, I think it's probably arguably one of the best songs like of a boy bander to venture solo. Besides that, why don't I know any of these other songs? <laughs> like, besides the Ain't No Mountain High Enough, like I know that song. I don't even know the Michael McDonald cover. So like, I, where are, what's happening? I don't know. What's up with this category? Like, is Justin the only pop well, singer guess. in our generation? <laughs> I mean, no, but like maybe at that time he was the only one that just like had radio songs, I guess. Yeah. I mean, this category just seems weird and sort of random, but yeah. <laughs> I mean, if I had to vote between all those, I would pick Justin too. So let's talk about the best pop performance by a duo or group with vocal. And our nominees are Underneath It All by No Doubt. <laughs> Misunderstood by Bon Jovi. Hole in the World by the Eagles. There's a hole in the world tonight. On Whale by Matchbox 20. I'm not crazy, I'm just a little unwell. I know right now you can't tell. Stacy's mom, Fountains of Wayne. <laughs> and our Grammy goes to Underneath That Out by No Doubt. Ugh, I mean, I love so many No Doubt songs. And I think this is off Rocksteady. Hey Baby's on Rocksteady. Hey Baby, Hey Baby, Hey Baby, Baby. I think Hella Good's on Rocksteady. But like underneath it all, I'm just kind of like, mm, I don't know. Am I lame? I did no. read that Gwen wrote this song. So like creativity, artistry, 10 out of 10. But she was in a relationship with Gavin Rossdale at the time. And apparently the, the main line, the title line of the song, You're Really Lovely, Underneath It All, comes from a journal entry that Gwen wrote after spending a day in the park with Gavin, just flitting around in the park. But like... <laughs> I love I love getting stories like that. I just every time I'm like I would give an arm to have that creativity, but our winner underneath it all peaked at number 3 on the Billboard Hot 100 for 2 weeks. It was actually no doubt's highest charting single, which I guess I guess it makes sense why they would win for that one, you know. I don't know. Kind of surprised by that. Right? Like I don't know. They have so many other better songs, but 
I just would have loved, I don't know, seeing maybe Fountains of Wayne or even Matchbox 20 get this one. Like, I feel like Unwell was on repeat on the radio. Like, it was written by frontman Rob Thomas. It reached number five on the Billboard Hot 100, and it was Matchbox 20's third and final top 10 hit. Wait, they only had three? Why do I feel like everything they did was like... YouTube I don't, status. I mean, just remember, like, Oops, I Didn't Again didn't get number one. Like, most of these songs don't get number one. I agree with you on all fronts. Underneath it all is fine. It's fine. Is it Grammy best group vocal pop performance? No. I don't know, but it's fine. <laughs> Let's talk about the next one, which is best pop vocal album. This is a big one. Our nominees are Justified by Justin Timberlake, Stripped, Christina, Brainwashed, George Harrison, Bear, Annie Lennox, and Motown by Michael McDonald. Justin took this one with Justified. Were they robbed? Was Christina robbed? Was anyone robbed? Justified was a very good album, but... Stripped was robbed. Like, can we just talk about Stripped for one freaking second? We do have an entire episode on this, but just worth noting, Stripped was the 10th best-selling album of 2003. Christina was ranked as the most successful female pop artist of the year. She had six songs off of Strip chart. The album sold over 12 million copies worldwide. It was one of the best-selling albums of the 21st century. And again, it addressed these themes that no one wanted to talk about at the time. You know, insecurities, shame, casual sex, feminism, self-respect, staying true to yourself. Like, I don't know. Justified, I like it. I have, you know, a different relationship to Justin Timberlake. I have no relationship to Justin Timberlake, but like to him now than I did back then. But I, Justin Timberlake and... Pharrell and Timbaland, they make a lot of magic together back in the day, and I will give them that. But like, for example, Justified was on the Billboard 200 chart for 72 weeks. It sold 3.5 million copies in the US. So Christina sold about 10 million more copies than him. It peaked at number two, which is pretty notable, but there was one album it could not dethrone, and it was the Eight Mile soundtrack. No surprise wow. there. Um, but yeah, what do you think? I'm not surprised that Justified won. I do think it's a great album. And this was his first solo album, right? Yeah. It was like all eyes on Justin. And I have to say, like, I feel like that's a win for boy bands everywhere. I wasn't upset about it, you know? No, like, I, I, yeah. totally. No, I totally get where you're coming from. I'm just saying, I saw it as like a win for the boy band category, if you will. For sure. So I wasn't upset by it, you know? Mm -hmm. I also feel like it's worth noting that in his acceptance speech, Justin apologized for the Super Bowl halftime show the previous week. We talked about this in our Super Bowl episode. We went like royal deep into like the play-by-play -play of what happened, the fallout, all of that. But just as a reminder, Janet Jackson was not welcome to appear at the Grammys at all. She was pretty much blacklisted. And, you know, that's not Justin's fault. And at least he used his platform to apologize. But, you know, I wish he did a little bit more to apologize to Janet directly. But yeah, it's just interesting the contrast between their two nights and how we wish Janet was able to be there in attendance. But moreover, I'm also salty that Michelle Branch wasn't nominated mm. for this category for hotel paper. Like, what the hell? We got Brave. If I just And are you happy now on that album? Could you love me in the eyes and tell me that you're happy now? Mm -hmm. I feel like she could have been a contender. I agree. There were uh, some robbings. Some thievery was happy. Swiper? No, swiping. All right, we're moving into our next category, and that is best pop collaboration with vocals. I love how they have to say, like, with vocals. Yeah, like, like what? You sing with your voice. No shit. Like, <laughs> right? <laughs> I don't get it. <sighs> okay, the nominees are Whenever I Say Your Name by Sting and Mary J. Blige. Can't hold us down, Christina mm. and Lil Kim. La Vie en Rose by Tony Bennett and KD Lang. And though I close my eyes, 
Gonna Change My Way of Thinking by Bob Dylan and Mavis Staples. And Feel Good Time, Pink and William Orbit. And the winner was Whenever I Say Your Name by Sting and Mary J. Blige. I have a feeling you're going to have some strong feelings womp, about this, Mary. Womp. So lay it on. <laughs> yes. No. I mean, come on. Stripped was not getting its flowers. They were not happy with what was being said on Stripped, with what Christina was doing with that album. Can't Hold Us Down is basically a fuck you to the misogyny. And we let it down by not giving it the best pop collab of the year. We let Can't Hold Us Down down. Okay. And I remember researching about this album and it got so much shit in the press when it first came out. But I feel like that's kind of telling of the times. Like Christina was bringing attention to the sexist tenor of this era. And guess what? The patriarchy didn't like it. And luckily we've come a long way since then. I definitely think this song is recognized as the feminist anthem that it is and is getting the respect it deserves. But like I would listen to some of these songs. I hadn't heard them before. I was like, what the fuck are these random ass songs in this category? I did revisit <laughs> Feel Good Time though. And I liked that song. So yeah. yay pink. Yeah. I definitely think that Christina got Margot robbie Like, mm -hmm. I like the idea of Sting and Mary J. Blige collabing, but this song is just forgettable to me. Yeah. And if you haven't, I urge you to Oof. type it into your YouTube search bar when you have a moment because this, this music video, it's a little cringe. We got a lot of shirtless sting in there. It's weird. You know, Holding a guitar at a weird angle, looking off into the distance. It's a unique. Weird. <laughs> so the fact that people were making fun of Christina for her music video when she's wearing those adorable little gym type <sighs> shorts. Oh my God. It's a little enraging, frankly. <laughs> Don't get me going. <laughs> Oh Don't get her started. Okay. Before she erupts, we're going to move on to the next genre, the rap genre. Let's start with best female rap solo performance. So our nominees for this was Work It, Missy Elliott. Is it worth it? Let me work it. I put my thing down, flip it and reverse it. It's your minute, it's yet. Number... Came back for you, Lil' Kim. My fans across the world, I came back for you. Came back for you. Only concentrated scarface. Got it poppin' by DeBrat. Hey yo, I got it poppin'. The drinks keep coming and the fellas keep hollering at me. Hollin at me. Ride with me, MC Light. And go ahead, Queen Latifah. Ain't got a conscience. Let me hit response. And our girl Missy Elliott took the award home with work it. So in this one, thank God, I think they got it right. We'd love to see this for Missy. And this song was just like such a big deal. It was everywhere. And kind of like Outkast, this is how I was introduced to Missy Elliott. Work It spent 10 weeks in the number two position on the charts and it was certified two times platinum. And once again, kind of like Justin Timberlake trying to knock off the eight mile soundtrack with Justified from number one, Lose Yourself was the song that was in the way for Work It those 10 weeks when Work It was a number two, Lose Yourself was in the number one spot. But I love the creativity and uniqueness behind Work It. Like, this is where we, like, got the popularization of Banakadonk Donk. Yeah, think you can handle this, ka -donk, ka -donk, donk Like, hello. And then also when she does the lyric in reverse, when she's like, listen up and I'll take it backwards for you. Or whatever the lyric was. Yeah. And she's like, oh, but, 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 but. Listen up and i just thought that was so cool and i remember being like we had to like look up what did, what did it mean what was she saying and she literally was saying the same lyric backwards it was really cool <laughs> but donka donk was like a life-changing phrase for me would have taken to the streets if she didn't win this category she was not robbed not robbed indeed all right let's move on to our next category which is best male rap solo performance Again, freaking mm. contentious AF. Like, is it hot here? Because there are a lot of great artists there is. for this one. 
All right. Our nominees are Lose Yourself, Eminem, Into Club, 50 Cent, Get Busy, My Boy, Sean Paul, Stand Up, Ludacris. When I move, you move. Just like that. When I move, you move. Just like that. When I move, you move. Just like that. Hell yeah. Hey, DJ, bring that back. And Pump It Up, Joe Budden. <gasps> Just this, but pump it up. Lose Yourself by Eminem one. Of course. But like, let's take a step back. What an incredible year for this category. Like so many like big memorable songs. I would have been pissed if I had to go up against those other like songs and artists. Into Club. I, <gasps> I feel like that was probably like charting wise the next big song on the list. But like, oh my God, we already went on a rant about Sean Paul. Also loved Stand Up by Ludacris. Stand Up was his most successful single to date. It peaked at number one. It was platinum and it was actually produced by Kanye West. I had no idea. But there's just no way any of these songs had the impact and success of Lose Yourself. It was certified diamond. It was number one on the chart for 12 consecutive weeks and on the top 10 for a total of 16 consecutive weeks. I'm not robbed. I agree. I mean, the competition was just so fierce, but <sighs> yeah, there's no denying that Lose Yourself like was the song of yeah. the year. It was a good year for rap music. It really was. Speaking of competitive category, mm-hmm. best rap performance by a duo or group was crazy. So the nominees were Shake Your Tail Feather by mm-hmm. Belly, Pity Diddy, and Murphy Lee. <laughs> Gossip Folks by Missy Elliott featuring Luda. Magic Stick, Lil Kim featuring 50 Cent. Dipset Santana's Town, Jewel Santana featuring Cameron. And Can't Stop, Won't Stop by Young Guns. And Shake Your Tail Feather won. Thank God. Oh my God. Vivid memories. I taped Shake Your Tail Feather off the radio and put it in my yellow portable tape player and would rollerblade up and down my driveway, listening, just rewinding and listening to that song on repeat. Again, another strong category for 2004, but I'm so glad Shake Your Tail Feather won it. This song was off the Bad Boys 2 soundtrack and it was a collab of some of the rap it boys at the time, if you will. It topped the Billboard Hot 100. It gave Nelly his third number one on the chart. Like Nelly was just like such a moment at this time, by the way. So many hits. Murphy Lee had his first number one with this song, and this was P. Diddy's fifth number one, making Diddy at this time the rapper with the most number one hits on the chart before eventually being passed by Drake. But we know that P. Diddy is facing some serious accusations right now. And again, we're just kind of retelling the history here. We're not you know, by any means endorsing P. Diddy or... Yeah, we do not (laughs) endorse P. Diddy, formerly Diddy, formerly Puff Whoever he is now. But there was a time in 2004 where he had the most number one singles out of the rappers. So we are retelling history. But my God, this song was a moment. Not robbed. Hard agree. (laughs) Not robbed. All right, let's talk about the next one. This is also... The competition is freaking fiercer than Sasha. If you're picking up what I'm putting down... This is best rap dash sung collaboration. Obviously, we have Beyonce and Jay Z nominated for Crazy in Love. Where is the love by Black Eyed Peas and Justin Timberlake? Love You Better, LL Cool J featuring Mark Dorsey. Front in the Neptunes featuring Pharrell Williams and Jay Z. Wow, 
wow, Jay-Z is nominated for two songs in one category. I literally didn't notice that until just this moment. And beautiful Snoop Dogg featuring Pharrell and Uncle Pharrell. Charlie. Okay, double dipping Pharrell and Jay-Z really stacking the odds in their favor. Well, sorry, Pharrell. Jay-Z took this one with Beyonce for Crazy in Love. I mean, you already know what I'm going to say. I'm not robbed. This Mm. was deserved for Beyonce. I mean, I think Beyonce was the clear winner. Just like no one could have held a candle to lose yourself. Like no one could have held a candle to what Crazy in Love was when it came out. Like, This was Beyonce's first number one single as a solo artist. It spent eight weeks at number one, 15 in the top 10, and introduced us to her and Jay, the music video, the choreo, like that's been around forever. We all know it. It was just completely life-altering and has stood the test of time. Again, some strong contenders in this category, but crazy in love, the rightful owner of the crown. Oh, I love that. And fun fact, Beyonce became the fourth female artist to win a record five awards in one night. Prior to Beyonce, Nora Jones, Alicia Keys, and Lauren Hill had won five in one night. And since 2004, Amy Winehouse and Alison Krauss became the fifth and sixth artists to tie their record. Okay, so they all won five awards in one night, right? And you think that that's like really fun and exciting. Well, in 2010, Beyonce broke her own record and she earned six awards Mm -hmm. in one night. And this record was later tied by Adele in 2012. And I'm sure that they were thrilled by that because they love each other and are always so sweet to each other. I know. It's so cute. I just recently saw a TikTok video of like Adele giving a speech and like talking to Beyonce about her impact. It was what lemonade. It was the lemonade era. And she's like, you should have won this award. I don't disagree with her. Mm -hmm. But I always feel like it's so, Beyonce is always in those awkward positions where people are like, you should have won. And it's like, okay, what am I supposed to say to that? Yeah. Yeah, She just kept going, thank you. I love you. Thank you. It was so sweet. Please stop. Like literally stop. (laughs) Please. I would die if I was in that position. She handles it so well. She's such a queen. All right. We're going to talk about best rap song. As we know, again, this is really celebrating the songwriters. So we have Lose Yourself again. Beautiful by Snoop Dogg featuring the Neptunes, Inda Club, 50 Cent, Work It, Missy Elliott, and Excuse Me, Miss, Jay-Z featuring Pharrell Williams. Excuse me. Can I get my grown man on so much that I see some ladies tonight that should be hanging with Jason? Jason. I actually love that song. All right. I'm not going to lie. Eminem, Lose Yourself won. I think we both agree, not robbed, because agreed, but for all the reasons that we've already stated. Yes, a strong category. Such a strong... I really love Excuse Me, Miss. Now I'm kind of like salty that that didn't win, but it just I understand why it. Lose Yourself swept. Exactly. Yeah. Now let's talk about Best Rap Album. We have Outcast nominated for Speaker Box. Dash the Love Below, Missy Elliott for Under Construction, Get Rich or Die Trying, 50 Cent, The Blueprint, The Gift and the Curse, Jay-Z, and Phrenology, The Roots. I love The Roots. Questlove is such a vibe. Unfortunately, though, he did not take home the trophy because Outkast did for Speaker Box, The Love Below. I'm really happy for Outkast. They swept so many awards that night. This was deserved. But I would say Missy Elliott is a close, close, close second for me because Rolling Stone named Under Construction one of the 100 best albums of the 2000s. And Hip Hop DX, which is like a dedicated hip hop critic site, named it one of the 20 best rap albums of all time. I just would be curious if Speaker Box The Love Below made those lists too or not. You know, I didn't do my due diligence to find out. I'm really just trying to step it up for my one female in the category. <laughs> no, I, I fair enough. <laughs> what <are they> cool? <laughs> All right. So we're done with the rap category. We're going to talk about some of the rock girlies. The rock girlies. We're going to start off with best female rock vocal performance. Our nominees are Trouble Pink. <laughs> Losing Grip, Avril Lavigne. Time of Our Lives, Bonnie Wright. So let the neighbors talk about us. We gonna have the time of our lives. 
righteously, Lucinda Williams. And are you happy now, Michelle mm. Branch? And our winner is Trouble. I'm trouble mm. now. And you know I what love Pink, but this song, I don't know. It, it's okay. I, mean, it's I love what you wrote, but not this one. Yeah, like, I love Pink songs, but not this one. Like some other ones could have definitely <laughs> won, my God. But I think there was a little robbying occurring here because – the Michelle Branch masterpiece, Are You Happy Now, really deserved this. But let's talk about our winner. Trouble was released as the lead single off Pink's album, Try This. It peaked at number 68 on the Billboard Hot 100. Again, I'm not super impressed by that. Fun fact, both the Pussycat Dolls and Jeremy Renner appeared in the music video for Trouble. Like, what? Meanwhile... Michelle Branch and John Shanks, Are You Happy Now? Masterpiece peaked at number 16 on the Billboard Hot 100, stayed at the charts for 20 weeks, and became Michelle's fifth top 40 hit. Again, I love Pink, but robbed. I could not agree more. Freaking robbed. Michelle Branch deserved this trophy. Also, like, trouble. Like, it just reminds me of a song that's, like, played in a kid's movie. Yes. Like, during a montage when they're, like, playing laser tag or a food fight or, like, running away from a bad guy. Like, it's giving, like, ball cop. Yes. Lizzie and Miranda and Gordo through the mall. Or, like, the security guard during the Aaron Carter yes. episode. <laughs> like, I like it, but it's just fine. It's benign. And benign does not get you a Grammy. Right. Like, it cannot compare to the angst of Michelle Branch. I know. Also, losing grip by Avril is so angsty. I love that Avril was nominated for so many different songs. Yeah. And like, why wasn't she nominated for Skater Boy or Complicated? Like my I favorite know. ones. Like, I just, I don't understand. I know. That's a good point. Like, why weren't they deemed worthy enough? Like why was and again, does that just go back to our point that like just because it's popular, it's like what the Academy Award is trying to do with Barbie right now and being like just because it's popular doesn't mean it's art. Uh, whatever. So there are just a couple other wins that I thought were fun this year because this is the year Chicago mm. won a Grammy for best soundtrack album for a motion picture, television, or other visual media. I'm Pop, sick, squish, ah ah, Cicero Lipschitz. <laughs> We know every word. No, I mean, a well-deserved win. Oh, my goodness. Not robbed. And I loved that producer of the year went to the Neptunes. I mean, they were all over these nominations, and they're just so quirky cool. In the words of Max Martin, like, Pharrell Williams happened, and he definitely (laughs) changed the tenor of what music was at the time. Let's talk about them really quickly. Like, the Neptunes deserve this. They have a fun little backstory. Pharrell and Chad Hugo met at summer camp for the School of Gifted and Talented in Virginia Beach. There's a camp like that? (laughs) There's literally like gifted and talented camps, I guess. Who knew? Imagine not going to a school for the gifted and talented and then finding out when you're in your 30s that there was a school for the gifted. Yep. Our application was lost in the mail. (sighs) Pharrell played the drums and Chad played tenor sax. And they came together then as the Neptunes, after meeting at camp, entered a local talent contest in 92. And they were discovered by a bigwig named Teddy Riley, whose studio was close to where Pharrell went to school. So that's when they started kind of messing around, mixing beats, trying to get noticed, work with artists. And in 2000, so like eight years after they were discovered is when they really broke into the scene. They had a few kind of Lurps on the radar before then, but they were on Jay Z's I Just Want to Love You. I'm a hustler, baby. I love that one. And Mystical's Shake Your Ass, which we've discussed oh, at length. Show me what you're working with. Yes. Shake your ass. Watch yourself. Shake your ass. Show me what you're working with. In 2001, we heard them on Slave for You. And 2002, NSYNC's Girlfriend. girlfriend. 
And this is when they were popping the fuck off. This pairing, the Neptunes, received numerous awards, specifically from the Grammys. They were nominated every year from 2004 to 2007. And again, in 2004, this year, the Neptunes won for Producer of the Year and Best Pop Vocal Album with Justified. And they were nominated three additional times this year in 2004 for Beautiful, Front, and Excuse Me, Miss. Like, what a frick. They got five nominations in 2004, which is crazy. It's a production team, but overall, the Neptunes have received six awards from their 18 nominations, which is like a decent ratio, but I could see them getting a few more than that. They're so impressive. Well, Mary, what did you think of our little walk down memory lane? It was fun. It was enraging. It was justifying (laughs) and it was depressing all at once. I feel like for the most part, a lot of people got it right though. You know, Yes. Generally speaking, a few Margot Robbies though. A few Margos and Gretas sprinkled in there. But for the most part, what an exciting year for music. I loved listening back to all these, especially Dido. God, I love her. <laughs> especially Shake Your Tail Feather. Are you kidding Shake me? Tail, Where are my rollerblades? But before we sign off, I just wanted to read a review that we got. Because as we said, if you rate us five stars and leave us a nice little review wherever you listen to your podcasts, We will read it on an episode. And personally, thank you. So this one we got from Audio Baby. Hey, Audio Baby. He, she, they say, I grew up during the Y2K era and I'm a self-proclaimed nostalgia expert. I find myself frequently saying the same thing at the same time as them. It feels like I'm reliving that iconic time with good friends. Thank you, ladies, for the amazing work. You both are hilarious and your research skills are on point. Oh my God, that was so nice. That's literally the best compliment I've ever gotten. Because like sometimes I'm listening back to our episodes and I like say something out loud and then I say the episode and I'm like, <laughs> is this too niche or annoying? So thank you for giving us a little <sighs> confidence boost. Audio Seriously, baby. that's the reason we do it. We want you to feel like you're our besties hanging out with here with us. And we appreciate that. That means a lot that you said that. That was very sweet. I missed you. Audio- She's Misty. And if you want to make Mary Misty on our next episode, yes. head over to wherever you listen to your podcast. Give us five stars and write us a nice review. And please follow us at When They Popped Pod on Instagram. We always post some really fun videos. We're on TikTok also at When They Pop. Yes. So follow us there. Sometimes we, I get my shit together and post there. Sometimes I don't. <laughs> She's we'll been it together. She's been on a kick lately, crushing it. A Max Martin in fueled frenzy. <sighs> well, thank you guys so much for listening. Hope you have the best week ever and enjoy watching the Grammys. No, we'll be watching and probably posting some throwback pics on our Insta just for fun. <sighs> have a great week. Bye. Bye. Bye.